this is this is right for me. 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 Ah, I'm so glad I moved to Yorkshire. At last, I'm amongst my own people. I can breathe free air, finally indulge in my favourite hobby. Be free to breed ferrets, as God wanted men to do. Oh my, these are my people. These people know ferrets for sure. Gotta get the feed right for a good quality coat. I think mine might be good enough to put in show this year. Excuse me, um, are you all breeders around here? Aye, lad. Happen we are. You'll not find anyone around these parts who so isn't. That's incredible. I am too. Good to hear, lad. They'll fit right in. So what colour's yours? Yellow or green? I'm sorry? How do you keep its feathers clean? Wh- wait, f- feathers? You mean you're not talking about ferrets? Nay, nah, lad. We're all budgie fanciers here. Budgies? No. No, no. Oh, yes. Yes, my Joey. Look, Budgie's eye. You should see my Joey. Aye. You'll not find many around these parts that don't fancy a Budgie. But it... It can't be. Not... Not not Budgie. Budgies! 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 This is, this is right. Right. funny. 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 Fetch that stick, Al Joel. That's it. Go on. You can do it. No, I don't want you to fetch me a French poodle. No, Adolf, put her down. She doesn't like it. I wanted that stick, Adolf. Not a poodle. Why would I want a poodle? No, you cannot keep her. Her owner wants her back, and she's not very happy with you or me. Best we run off, Adolf. Run, lad. Run, I'll be behind you. No! Drop that poodle, you daft German shepherd. You can run faster without her in your mouth. Let go, you daft dog. Wait till I get you home. No supper for you or watching all programmes on the History Channel. This is this right is funny. Hi, I'm Walter from Malta. And I'm Kat. From Bath? No, York, actually. And this is my friend, Crystal. Also from York? No, Bristol. And this is Roger. Your husband? Our lodger. And his partner, Wayne. From Spain. Hey! Hi, Lincoln. What's up? She lived near Beverly. Beverly who? Beverly, York. Oh, I don't know her. Beverly, York. Beverly, near York. Yorkshire. And then Warwick. Near Coventry. And then Warwick. Over there, offered us Hickey's house. Henley was wonderful. Henley is wonderful, but expensive. I beg your pardon? Henley is beautiful, the river, all old buildings and history. Well, Henley helped us with the move. He's very strong and very masculine. We couldn't have managed without him. Excuse me, have you seen Peter? Peter who? Peter Lee, Peter Field, Peter Port, Peter Head, Peter Burr? No, Peter. Peter Streeter, the cockroach beater, or Peter Slater, the property locator? No, Peter. Not Peter Greater, the Latin translator, or Peter McGreater, the abattoir beater? No, Peter McGeeter, the straightener liquidator. I haven't seen him, no. Look alive, folks, it's judgmental here. I've seen Hector the Inspector and Dennis from Venice, Jules Who Drools and Harris from Paris. I met Jenna in Vienna of York in New York, Bill on a hill and Sally down the valley. I ate jelly watching telly while Joan was on the phone and Gail was in jail for nearly Benny with the jelly. I hung with Mark in the park and Ali Crystal Pally, Clancy the Nancy and Bunchy Soft Touch. We was pulled by the fuzz and it met the eyes water. This is right, this is funny. right, for right, right. You keep budgies in your houses, in cages. No, no, you shouldn't do that. They're, they're highly dangerous birds. They peck your eyes out before looking at you. Revolutionaries, every one of them. All called Joey. No, 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 not budgies. Terrible creatures. Highly dangerous birds, not to be trusted. Oh, it's best if the government deports them all back to Australia. Much safer. Oh, not to be trusted. Oh, a pub. I'll go in there to calm my nerves. A drink would help. All right, lad, what can I get there? Ah, oh, just a shot of a... Oh, no, make that a double of a... Ah! What's that? Oh, you mean Joey? Ah, put Budgie. Ah, lends the place a bit of character and no... Lad? 
about picking up a few items of shopping call. Perhaps, perhaps I should be looking at this differently. Why are you talking like that? Like what? Like some kind of brooding detective. Brooding detective? And why are you repeating everything I say? Repeating? Is that what I'm doing, Sandra? Look, Carl, if you want to eat later, I need shopping. Simple enough for you. Simple? This list you gave me isn't simple at all, is it, Sandra? What? In order to gather all these items, I'd have to visit, what, four or five shops? Well, yes. Four or five different shops, all on the high street or several separate locations? Yes, I suppose so. Well, which is it, Sandra? And why are you getting flustered, Sandra? Are you sure this can all be purchased in one afternoon? It's not that big an issue, Carl. If you can't do it, I suppose... What? You seem to suppose so much, Sandra. I suppose I could make time to do it myself. At least I know where the shops are. You suppose so? Suppose? And you'd buy several items in each of those shops? Of course. Bread, eggs, beef mince, yes. Well, Sandra, suppose, just suppose, that one of those shops doesn't have, let's say, as an example, pimento stuffed olives. I'd buy some different ones. So, pimento stuffed olives, central to your plans a few seconds ago, are now... Not so vital. Of course they're not vital. And what about breadsticks? No, they're not central to my plans either. So what you're saying is that very little on this list is important. I wonder, Sandra, if in fact any of the items you've asked me to purchase are relevant to this evening's little soiree. Of course they are. Well, if these things are so important, why did you not make sure you had them before now? I wonder if your supposed lack of forward planning is in fact a ruse. A ruse? What do you mean, a ruse? What if this shopping list is a ruse to get me out of the house, away from whatever it is you're really planning to do here? Oh, for pity's sake, give me the list. I'll go shopping. But that in itself could be a double ruse, to throw me off the scent. Scent? What scent? I'll do the shopping, and the cleaning, and the washing, and the ironing, cooking, baking, set the table, arrange the entertainment, drinks, petty fours, and then walk the dog. Walk the dog, you say? Where? This is this right, right. right. I just need to get home. Get back to my lodgings. I'll be safe there. My landlady's a trustworthy woman. Back so soon? How do you like village? Um. Oh, you look right worn out. Not used to all ills, I'll bet. You southerners, eh? Uh, I think I might just go up to my room. I think I need to lie down. You'll be my guest, lad. And you'll find I've left you a bit of company. I'm sure you and Joey are going to get on very well, Joey. Joey. No! Why are there five French poodles in the spare bedroom, Aldolf? You've taken them prisoner? That was naughty. You declared war on French poodles? No, you have not. You are not allowed to declare war on any other dogs or countries. Who says so? I do, and I'm your mistress. I feed and water you and take you walks. No wars, Adolf, ever. What do you expect me to do with your prisoners? You haven't thought that far forward? Thought so. You'd better take them back to where you found them, I suppose. You can't remember which one goes where. Their home addresses might be on their collars. You 
cannot read, you're a dog. You're a nuisance is what you are. I will have to take them back one by one and say I found them wandering around looking lost. No, you cannot keep them. I'm not buying food for them. It'll cost a fortune. No more French poodles. No more prisoners of war. So, okay. No need to sulk. Oh, you dark dog. This is, this is <laughs> Welcome here tonight to the final of Sheffield's very own Drunk Gymnastics. We're here this Friday evening in a prime spot on West Street to share with you at home tonight's spot. As ever, the champion takes home the kebab of their choice from our partners in fine-ish dining at Aslan's Kebabbery. Here we have the first contestants in the floor event. After two bottles of Prosecco and gin, we have Sharon and Lucy. Sharon has recently been through a tough breakup, so really needs a win here tonight. She's posted a 4.8 difficulty manoeuvre, the curbside rise, without spilling a drop. Oh, she's pulled it off and maintained her dignity, but a little wobble at the end will lose her valuable marks. She scored a 13.65, with Bouncer scoring a little harshly. And next up is Lucy, a good all-rounder Lucy. She doesn't normally favour the rings, but let's see how she gets on with this one. Same difficulty rating as the first competitor, but she's opted to swap the kebab for a pizza. And that extra width may cause her some problems. And she's nailed it! A tough routine, but delivered with that trademark confidence. The scores are in... 14.05 will take her ahead, but it's early in the competition. Next, we're on to the men's parallel bars. The usual rules apply. Our competitors have to travel between two pubs next door to each other without alerting the bouncers to their inebriated state. The first chap is up, Lewis, age 32, a single father on his first night out in six months. He's noticed that the bouncer's attention wanders and he's taken full advantage Amazing! Staggering like that, I've not seen since Atlanta in 92. That's nigh on perfect score, 14.62 as the second entrant takes to the street. He's readying himself now is Jack, a serious competitor with a long and storied history in this event. Has he got the experience to best that outstanding score? Oh, he does not, and unfortunately, Time Giggle has just lost him his place on the podium. He's going to regret that in the morning. As we leave this area so they can set up for the next event, we can now switch to coverage of the rings. Remember, anyone who's caught by the neighbours when they answer the door is automatically disqualified. <laughs> this is right this funny. Is right this funny. Is right funny. I just need to sleep. So tired. Tired of running. Quiet, Joey, please, I can't. Oh, I can't stand it anymore. Budgies. Budgies everywhere. Can't think. How? How to be free of them? So tired. So hungry. Can't. Wait. Joey? Come, Come here, here, boy. Come and get your little fat-eating budgies here, all born and bred in Barnsley. The finest eating budgies in the world, none better in God's own county. Come on, people, get your eating budgies here, six for a pound, real value for money, makes a lovely snack. Come on, get your best value budgies here, a real bargain, not four, not five, half a dozen beautiful, delicious budgies, six for a pound. I'm giving them away. Come and get your finest little fat-eating budgies here, folks. This is right, 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 for right for me. What are you doing watching telly at this hour? It, it is not research. No, Dan Snow is not your strategic advisor. Of course you're not going to annex the recreation ground. Or the gimmel. The council wouldn't stand for it. I don't care if you have marked it as your territory. Now come on. Stop making such a fuss. Get in the kennel at Churchill in Gaulle. Don't be soft. Of course they haven't got it in for you. And that's no way to talk about a shih tzu. Right Money was performed by... John Federenko. John Wright. Tim McClellan. Sheila Alves. 
Phoenix Crawley. It was written by John Critchley, Ed Crawley, Spleeny Dotson, and Bruford. It was produced by the Mechanical Pig. <laughs>